I think we may be able to implant a neural link in less than a year in, in a person, I think. The device we're working on right now is about, it's about an inch in diameter. You replace that, um, say, one inch diameter piece of skull with the, this neural link device. Um, and that has a battery and a, and a Bluetooth and an inductive charger. Um, and then you, and, and, no, and then you also got to insert the electrodes. Uh, so the electrodes are very carefully inserted uh, with, with our uh, with our, our robot that we developed. Uh, that's look, it's, you know, very carefully putting in the electrodes and avoiding, you know, and any veins or arteries. Uh, so it's, it's, it's you know, it doesn't create trauma. It, it can interface basically anywhere, in, in, anywhere in your brain. Um, so it could be something that uh, you know helps cure, say, uh, eyesight, like give you returns your eyesight, even if you've like lost your optic nerve type of thing. It's a generalized um, sort of uh, thing for for fixing any kind of brain injury in, in, in principle. Like if you, or if you've got like like severe epilepsy or something like that, it could it could just it could just sort of stop the epilepsy from occurring. Like you could detect it in real time and then fire a a counter pulse and stop the epilepsy. Um, if um, I mean, there's, there's a whole range of brain injuries. Like people, if somebody gets a stroke, they could lose the ability to speak. Uh, the, that that also that could also be fixed. So if you get like stroke damage, or you, you lose, say, you know, muscle control over part of your face or something like that. I think, and then when when you, when you get old, you tend to uh, if you get like you know, uh, Alzheimer's or something like that then you lose memory and this could help you with you know restoring your memory that kind of thing. Think of just like a bunch of circuits and there's some like circuits that are broken and we can like uh, fi fix those circuits. It's a substitute for those circuits. At a certain age we, we all are, are going to get Alzheimer's, we're all going to get senile um, and then you know moms forget the names of their kids and that kind of thing and so you know do it's like you said, like, okay, well, you know, this would allow you to remember your names of your kids and, and, and have a normal, a much more normal life where you, you, you're able to function much later in life. Um, so I think that, so essentially, that there, there would, almost everyone would find a need at some point, if, if you get old enough, to use Neural, neural Link. Um, and, uh, and, and then it's like, okay, so we can improve the functionality and, and improve the communications, communication speed, so then you will not have to use your thumbs to communicate with the computer. We're already a cyborg to some degree, right? Because you've got your phone, you've got your laptop. Glasses. Your, yeah, yeah, you got your yeah. You know, sure. electronic devices. Yeah. Um, and um, I mean, we're, today, if you, your, your phone, if you, if you don't bring your phone along, it's like you have missing limb syndrome. It's like, you know, it feels like something's really, really missing. So we're already partly, um, part, you know, partly a cyborg um, or an AI symbiote, essentially. Um, it's just that the data rate to the electronics is slow. So especially output, like you're just going with your thumbs. I mean, like, what, what's your data rate? Maybe optimistically 100 bits per second. That's being generous. Um, and, and now the computer can, can communicate at like, you know, 100, 100 terabits. You know, so, so certainly, you know, gigabits are a trivial at this point. So this, this is like, you know, basically your, comp your computer could do a, a mil do things a million times faster. Or, or you, you, at a certain point, it's like talk. The AI is like talking to a tree. Okay, this is boring. <laughs> You talk to a tree. It's very, not very entertaining. Um, so, um, so if you can, if you can solve the, the data rate issue and your especially your output but input too, then you can improve the symbiosis that is already occurring between man and machine. The AI is getting better and better. Um, so. Now let's assume it's sort of like a, a benign AI scenario. Uh, even in a benign scenario, we're kind of left behind. You know, we're we're, we're not we're not along for the ride. Um, we're just too dumb. Right. So, <laughs> so so how do you go along for the ride? Um, 
Yeah, it's like you can't beat him, join him. Think, think like how your phone can, you can record videos on your phone. Mm -hmm. Like there's no, no way you could remember a video right. as accurately as your phone or a camera, you know, could. So, uh, you know, if, you, if you've got like a, you know, some, some, you know, version 10, Neuralink, whatever, and far in the future, you, you could, re you could remember, you could re recall everything, but just like it's a movie, Crystal all, clear. It, it, including all the entire sensory experience, emotions, everything, 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 everything. and play it back. And Do you, you think and, you'll and be able to you share? Edit it. Edit it. Yeah. It's the kind of thing where your productivity would improve, I don't know, dramatically, maybe by a factor of 10 with it. So you could definitely just, you know, uh, I don't know take out a loan and do it and earn earn the money back real fast. An AI neural, neural net is trying to simulate what a brain does, basically. The word neural net comes from the, the brain. It's like a net of neurons. The essential elements of an AI neural net are really very, very similar to a human brain neural net. So when you're programming artificial intelligence or you're working with artificial intelligence art, are they specifically trying to mimic the developmental process of a human brain? In a lot of ways. There's some ways that are different. Um, you know, an, an analogy that's often used is like, you know, we, we don't make a submarine swim like a fish, mm. uh, but we take the principles of, of how, you know, what, what it, of hydrodynamics and apply them to a submarine. The way your brain works right now, you've got uh, kind of like the animal brain, reptile brain, kind of, let's, for argument's sake, it, it's like the limbic system, basically. And you've got the, the cortex. Um, now the, the brain purists will argue with this definition. But essentially, you've got um, the primitive brain and you've got the, the, the sort of uh, smart brain or the, the, the brain that's capable of planning and understanding concepts and diff difficult you know, things that a monkey can't understand. Um, now, the, the, your cortex is much, much smarter than your limbic system. Um, nonetheless, they work together well. So I haven't met anyone who wants to delete their limbic system or their cortex. There are people quite happy having both. Um, so you can think of the, the this as being the, like the, the computer, the AI is a, is like a a third layer, a tertiary layer. Uh, so that is like that could be symbiotic with the cortex. It would be much smarter than the cortex, but you essentially have three layers, and, and you actually have that right now. Your phone is capable of things, and your computer is capable of things that your brain is definitely not. You know, storing you know, terabytes of information perfectly. Um, doing in incredible calculations that you, you, you know, we couldn't even come close to doing. You have that with your computer. Um, it's just like I said, the data rate is slow. You, the connection is weak. Let's say you've got some complex idea that you're trying to convey to somebody else. And how, how do you do that? Well, your, your brain spends a lot of effort compressing a, a complex concept into words. And there's a, there's a, lot, of, a lot of loss, information loss that occurs when compressing a complex concept into words. And then you say those words, those words are then interpreted, then they're decompressed by the person who is listening. Um, and they, they will at best get a, a, a very incomplete understanding of what you're trying to, con to convey. It's very difficult to convey a complex concept with precision um, because you've got compression, decompression. You may not even have heard all the words correctly. And so uh, communication is difficult. You wouldn't need to talk. Yeah, I think you would, in principle, you would be able to communicate uh, very quickly and with far more precision uh, ideas uh, and and language would I'm not sure what would happen to language but you, you could probably in a situation like this that you would be able to just it'd be like, kind of like the matrix you, you want to speak a different language no problem right that's why it was downloaded the program the first few iterations re really in the first few versions all we're going to be trying to do is, is solve brain injuries um so so it's like don't don't, don't worry that it's not going to sneak up on you <laughs> This, this this will take a while. <laughs> How many years before you don't have to talk? If the if the, if the development continues to accelerate, then 
maybe like five years, five to 10 years. I mean, the possibilities are endless. You could also save state, like save your brain state, like, like a saved game in a video game. You, you could uh, save state um, and restore that state into a biological being if you if you wanted to in the future in principle. There's like nothing like from a physics standpoint that prevents this. Now you, you'd be a little different, but then you're also a little different when you wake up in the morning from yesterday and you're a little different. In fact, if you say like you five years ago versus you today, it's quite a big difference. So you'd be substantially you. I mean, you'd be, you, you'd certainly think you're you. Well, I hope consciousness propagates into the future and gets more, more, more sophisticated and complex and, and that it understands the questions to ask about the universe.